Hey guys, this is Zachary Slatter. Hello and welcome to another exciting art theft video. Because it seems like that's basically what my channel has become. I think this is the fourth video I've done in about a month or a month and a half. And I very, very much doubt that it will be the last. By the way, if you want even more information on the topic, my good friend Corey from Corey's Datapad did an in-depth video on the topic and spoke to an artist, but this video is actually special because it also brings another topic with it, messed up Star Destroyer designs. So let me just do a brief recap before we get into things. First of all, Marvel Star Wars has been caught using fan art in comics without credit and made to appear like the artist's own work. As I've said, I've already done three or four videos on this subject and at the end of today's video, I'll have a little update on a project that I'm currently working on which will attempt to catalog all of this theft and there's a lot more than even I expected, but I'll talk about that later. Another cause that I've taken up recently, although not as seriously, is the issue of Star Wars messing up their Star Destroyer designs. We've seen this in Fallen Order, we've seen lore mistakes in Star Wars Rebels, various official posters have messed up the Star Destroyer design. In The Rise of Skywalker, we see very clearly that the Sith fleet, whatever it is, uses Imperial One class Star Destroyers, which have a very distinctive, what the lore calls a tractor beam array, it's much taller than on the Imperial 2, and there are also some minor differences with the weapons and whatnot. Anyway, as I alluded to, some posters have used the Imperial 2 when they should use the Imperial 1. That alone, not really a big deal, especially if they're illustrating a new Star Destroyer on their own. They're probably just given references by somebody and they don't fully understand the lore difference. I get that. However, what's not acceptable is what we saw today. Across Star Wars' various social media accounts, we got a post saying check out this new poster inspired by hashtag Star Wars, hashtag The Rise of Skywalker art by the artist, then see the film December 20th. Initially when I read the tweet, I actually thought that this was just a fan poster being retweeted by Star Wars, however if you check out the artist's Twitter, which I'm not going to link, please don't harass them, it is clear that this was actually officially a commissioned piece of art. Anyway, this poster received a lot of attention for things that aren't really relevant to this video by the way, the use of color and white and whatever else, and I have to admit I think the poster is pretty cool too, however there are a few glaring issues. First of all, the Starfighter in the foreground is the TIE Silencer, which was Kylo Ren's TIE Fighter in Episode 8, but in Episode 9 he's got a brand new fighter called the TIE Whisper. So that's a little lore problem. Did the artist actually create this ship? I assume so, I'm not sure, and that's one of the problems that I'll be talking about in just a second. Besides for that, the poster has a reimagining of the original movie poster, which I think is pretty cool. Then we get to the main problem, the Star Destroyer. And of course note that this ship actually takes up the majority of space on the poster, just due to how many of them there are. You would assume then that the artist would definitely get this right and would definitely make their own beautiful design. Well, that's not the case here. First of all, this is obviously not an Imperial 1 Star Destroyer, the tower is all wrong, but it's not even an Imperial 2 Star Destroyer. Now, although the difference here isn't as easy to spot as, say, between the Imperial 1 and the Imperial 2, for those who have spent way too much time looking at ships, this is clearly an Allegiance class Star Destroyer. A lot of people can kind of sense that there's something wrong because the ship is just bulkier than it should be, it's larger and a little chonkier. But for me, I notice it because there are too many steps on the superstructure, too many levels. And personally, I know of only one person who makes Allegiance class Star Destroyers, and that's Fractal Sponge. So I went to his website, got his Allegiance class Star Destroyer, compared it to the model here, and once you know it, it's not only inspired by his design, but actually his design lifted totally. You can see it especially in the smaller details, like in the turbo laser arrays. The only difference is probably because it would have been too obvious with the Allegiance's massive reactor bulb on the bottom. The artist cut off the bottom of his ship and just made a basic triangle. You can tell especially that the two are the exact same when you look at the largest ships on the side of the poster. There the details 1000% show the 
that this is Fractal Sponge's Star Destroyer. And of course, this isn't the first time his work has been appropriated. It's been used even in official Star Wars marketing material many times, but is also used with permission by people like me and others. Let me be clear, there's a difference between making a mistake with an Imperial Star Destroyer, maybe even basing your design on Fractal Sponge's allegiance. However, there is a serious problem when you straight up take someone's model, do a little bit of cropping, and then put it on your poster with a filter over it. Presumably, the artist is being paid for it. In one of their tweets, they mentioned something about people could ask Star Wars to sell copies of the poster, which would be another payment. And the problem is that one of the poster's dominant design elements is somebody else's work, and presumably, Fractal Sponge is not being credited and not being paid. Now, there is a chance that I'm wrong, I'm going to send him an email, and if so, I'll put an apology video up, but I think, based on my experience with his work being stolen in the past, that that's unlikely. And I wish I could say that this was a single example of something that happens very rarely, but it's just not. I'm sure it happens all the time, in fact, but there are so many Star Wars modelers out there and so many Star Wars fan assets that it's very, very difficult to properly recognize. On one hand, even the official Rise of Skywalker poster used a Hot Toys figure in the background, which is not nearly as bad as stealing fan art, presumably. They discussed this, and it's an owned asset, so whatever. On the more sort of in-between level, as Cinematic Captures points out, one of the People's Magazine covers used a fan screenshot from Battlefront. 2. I say that that's more in between because yes, Battlefront 2 technically is a Star Wars property. There was fan work that went into this. Then on the blatant side, we have this. Now true, the Allegiance was technically a Star Destroyer in Star Wars Legends, but Fractal Sponge, as he said, never sold the model to Lucasfilm, just renders. And my big problem is now, after doing my research, I just can't look at Star Wars art without thinking, where is it from? What fan created this original work? And anytime basically a new piece of Star Wars art is released, I have people messaging me and it's just really frustrating because I see the art in a different way now and it feels like there's a level of creative bankruptcy. On the plus side, that totally means the Fractal Sponge Allegiant Star Destroyer is 1000% canon and you cannot tell me otherwise. Anyway, I don't have much else to say about the poster itself, but just to remind you guys that it's ultimately up to us. If we make a big stink about this sort of stuff and if we actually act like we deserve better and like fan artists more importantly deserve better, perhaps this problem may improve at least somewhat. On that note, I'm going to continue making these videos, I know that it annoys some of you, and I'm also working on a major project right now, which is attempting to catalog every instance of Star Wars stealing fan art. Now, that's not going to be possible just because of how widespread this problem is. This is going to shock some of you guys, but so far we've looked at 17 comic issues and found 87 Star Wars fan assets used by Marvel. So far, Shattered Empire 1 has been the worst, and we haven't even checked out the rest of the series yet. But that comic alone used over 20 different fan models, and I'm talking everything from turbo laser turrets to tracings of the Millennium Falcon or Corellian Corvettes. It's really just insane. I have to give an absolutely massive shout out, by the way, to Dark Sapiens, and I'll link to his Twitter down in the description. He has been leading this project and has probably collected about 70 of the ships so far. I honestly believe that if given enough time, we could find thousands of stolen pieces of fan art, and that is not at all an exaggeration. I gave an example in a prior video of the Mon Calamari fleet from the Star Wars mainline arc Mutiny at Mon Cala as an example of a good non-traced fleet. Well, it turned out I was wrong about that. Those, unfortunately, of course, were designed by a fan. So even what I've held up to be good and interesting design ultimately turned out not to be. To say that I'm jaded at this point, I think, would be an understatement. However, here's my plan moving forward. I'm going to keep the document right now between myself and Dark Sapiens. My feeling with that is, first of all, I want to make sure individually that each one of these is for sure a fan asset before I put it out in the world. I trust Dark Sapiens, he's got an even better eye than I do, but I am putting my name behind this, so I just want to be sure. I also am going to hold off, for now at least, from allowing other contributors, just because I want to, again, make sure that I maintain the integrity of the document moving forward. However, if you guys spot fan art being used in official Star Wars media, and you know what, I really recommend you look if you care about this issue, then please either message me on Twitter, send me an email, or just get a hold of me. If you want to contribute to the document directly, then what you can do is point to where the fan art exists, specifically which comic issue,
issue, which comic run, the date of the issue, the page, while also linking the fan artist and, if possible, the original work. Now, obviously, you don't have to do that, but that's the best way to contribute directly to this list. Again, in the future, I plan to make it even more public, and we're going to keep contributing. This has only been a short process so far. We haven't edited the document in over two weeks just because we've both been really busy. December is incredibly busy for Star Wars YouTubers. And this is a very, very difficult process because you essentially have to recognize the fanship and then find it. So this was 80 and a few days work. There's a lot more to be uncovered and I hope that you guys will continue to care about this issue as we hopefully continue to expose it. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Until next time, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the the force be with you.